This week's episode of the Birdcast, UFC fighter Matt Brown, comedian Mike Merrifield, and Brian Red Van Reichel. I apologize for the late post on the podcast, people. We're in production on Trip, trip Flip. I will be in D.C. in October. Go to birdbirdbird.com. This is the Birdcast. Uh, it's what the Vikings drink. Every time you would ask him what it was, he would just say, it's what the Vikings I know, drink. But I know. Are we recording right yeah, now? Yeah, we're recording. You so. need to know, man. You've got to be more professional. We're not. Um, just, okay, so. <laughs> yeah, it was, you know, about, about <laughs> two, me. Fists, two fists away from the mic. You know, I don't have to tell Brian. This is odd. I, feel, I'm, I just gave uh, podcasting advice to Brian Redman. That's kind of weird. Yeah, Brian, Seems you like want to talk to the mic? It's, Joey Diaz has a fucking podcast, and you'd be shocked the way he talks into a mic. This is my impression of Joey Diaz. Right <laughs> <laughs> I got the greatest story. One night when I was in prison. Oh, and, and then and you, can you believe that? And the place goes fucking nuts. We actually bought him uh, those those mics, headphone mics that you see like on like sports. Right. You know, with, where he, so he could not get away from the mic at any time. Really? But, uh, we never used it because we just know it would f- freak him out. Yeah, he's, <laughs> he tells the most fucking fascinating stories, but so, so often it's almost like he's oblivious that the mics needed. So, well, and you with the headphone, the headset mics are good until you laugh, and then you're laughing directly into right. that microphone. It sounds yeah. terrible. Yeah, this is the weirdest thing, to be honest with you, to be to be sitting right here uh, doing this podcast right now, which is technically your podcast. Technically, it's going to be a simulcast. Yeah, okay. Why not? And yeah. you, sh- you should record it also right now at the same time because you know how technology is, and you know if he loses his, then we lose it all. Yeah. So oh yeah. That, that I should have brought my I'm fucking. Not gonna, I should have brought my you shit. Should have brought uh, your stuff. So um, we have Burt Kreischer, Brian Redband, and uh, Matt Brown, UFC fighter Matt Brown. In do, you house. Like, do you prefer MMA fighter, or do you like when people say UFC? I don't really care, man. I, All mean, right. I guess UFC fighter, you know what I mean? Because yeah. MMA fighter could be anybody. Right? Yeah. All right. UFC nope. fighter's got a can stigma I, to it. Can I ask you a question that I've always fucking been dying to ask someone? Sure, man. So I heard there's a dude, um, Dave Stroop, the owner of this club, is a big wrestler. Were you a wrestler growing up? No. Nah. Okay. But I heard when you were, well, like, anyone who was a badass was dying to get cauliflower ear. Like, <laughs> they, it was like a fucking badge of honor. Like, I would love to have it just so I looked like a fucking you man. cauliflower ear beat No, why yeah. would you want that? <laughs> I don't know. I always thought that that was like a it badge of honor. It sucks, bro. Like, Seriously? Yeah. I mean. It hurts? Like, when it happens, it hurts. Like, now it don't. After it hardens up, it doesn't hurt. Oh, sweet. I don't think I even know what it is then. So what it is is, you know what a hematoma is? Uh, Like, like, if you get a big bump on your your head or something, is where the blood vessels pop and it fills up with blood. Well, you have, you know, millions or thousands, whatever, tiny blood vessels in your ears, so they pop a lot easier. So it fills up with blood, and then uh, it it hurts, you know, because you got a bunch of busted fucking blood vessels right but yeah then uh it, it hardens up and it doesn't hurt no more really but that's why so so when it hardens up or when it swells up at first you stick a needle in it to suck the blood out and that relieves the pressure Holy which hurts shit. i'm sweating just listening right, to this. which hurts worse than the, the original fucking you know blow up right and this is yeah. just because you love to fucking beat the shit out of people like you just yeah, love yeah. to either that or i'm fucking dumb i don't know well, I don't, if you got you got to be <laughs> If you're gonna be dumb, you gotta be tough, right? I guess. I guess. I'm. I'm. <laughs> if you gotta be dumb, you gotta be tough. That'd be yeah, it. that's a song. Right? That's a real song. Yeah, you never heard that. Oh no, I was like, that does sound like a good fucking title to a song. <laughs> you so, only listen to the the finest music, Bert. Yeah. So so wait, so yeah. when did you get your first like bit of cauliflower ear? Oh uh, shit! Like, do you see uh, it starting yeah. when you're a kid? Yeah. Uh, not not when I was a kid. I mean. Some people do, you know. That's why the wrestler, high school wrestlers, wear the headgear. That's why they're required to wear it. Yeah, most of my really? friends yeah, who do jujitsu all use uh, headgear. Yeah, really. Yeah. Did Joe have Joe? Yeah. Did Joe have cauliflower? No, but he wears headgear. He, he, he wears like two every uh, of everything. You know, really? he has like two uh, <laughs> uh, two cups. Two cups. It's kind of a badge of honor thing. <laughs> yeah, so, but, but, true? but at the really same time, there's, there's some studs that don't it. have it. You know, what I mean, some world class guys. So. You know, just because you don't got it, don't mean, but don't mean shit. But you know, if you walk into a bar and see a guy with cauliflower ear, don't fuck with him. I'll tell That's you a what, fucking yeah. <laughs> ever since ever since the uh, UFC has become so popular, I have I always had the attitude that I'd be good in a bar brawl. You know what I mean? Like if it went down, I'm six one. Like I always felt like I could carry my weight, dude. That but is. Then you the... watch UFC and you're like, there's no way I would start shit with anyone. Even the the fucking hundred and ten pounders would be just destroy me. You know, like. 
You realize what a pussy you are when you. When it's you watch it's it. so funny because I always and I, I I probably up until recently I'll say I'm gonna say the last time I almost got into a physical altercation was uh, nine days before my Comedy Central sp- hour special. I only remember that because I remember thinking this. Uh, it's like you, the little things, like like you said, when you see a dude with cauliflower, you go, "Don't fuck with that guy." When you see a guy with a neck tattoo, you're like, "You know what? I'm not even gonna roll the dice." This guy, this guy, I was turning left on, off of uh, Third Street on, over by the, um, onto a side street. And the guy was crossing the street slow. And I started to turn. I didn't see he was crossing the street. And he slowed up. He slowed up a little more to fuck me. And now traffic's coming. So I honked and I scared him. He went, Nee! Like, did that, like, and he didn't look cool. I started laughing. And he was like, fuck you. And I was, I don't know what, it's just a male instinct. I, like, stopped the car. Like, you know, like, Err! Like, what's, oh, what, now I stopped the car, and he ran to my car. Like, oh, shit, he's not going to, like, and, and the first thing he did is he went like this. He went, he w- looked at me and went, listen, and I realized he had adult braces, and I was like, I'm not fucking with this dude. Like, in my head, I did all the math of, like, he didn't get his teeth fixed when he was young because his parents couldn't afford it. He grew up poor. That means they beat him. He's going to fucking kick my ass. I did all that fucking math, and I was like, I'm not fucking, and I took off. I went, and then I was like, I was sitting there going, I rolled the dice on getting my teeth knocked out. Nine days before, I'm, I'm a comedian. What the fuck am I doing right. talking you, shit? You have no skills. There's nothing in your arsenal that prepares you for fighting. I've been in a few fights, but that was the thing. You try mis- to make him laugh. I, I could tickle him. Yeah. yeah just like, woo! Laugh, yeah. Um, I've been in a few fights in my life because you're just growing up a boy. You go, you like, it happens. And, and I went to all boys Catholic high school, went to college, big drinker, and fights kind of happen. And, and, and then... And in then, Catholic schools? Yeah, oh, dude. Happen. Dude, I remember my first oh, day. I, didn't know, I, didn't know. I went to Catholic retarded girls. hillbilly school. So. Oh, yeah. Cath- all boys Catholic school, high school. Was on the front? Pretty much. Oh, yeah. okay. First day of school, Spencer Ford was like four, maybe four, I'm going to say 410. B- kicked Eric Nupple's ass. Eric Nupple was 6'5. Spencer pulled a, stu- a chair up, stood on it, and knocked him out. Like, said, What are you going to do? And he pulled a chair over, stood on it, and punched him. And I went, Holy shit! Like, it's real. Yeah. But I, I think that's the misconception that a lot of guys have is that they're tough. And there, so many of us are not. Right. Yeah, see, that's I what I feel when I see someone with a neck tattoo. I think, oh, he thinks he's tough. You know what I mean? Yeah. He wants to show everybody that he's tough. But you know, it's, it, To me, it's like like you, could, like you could literally kick the shit out of most normal people at any minute. It's got to be. It'd be like if I had a huge dick. I would always want to take my dick out. Do you ever just, I mean, how do you... I get a small one and I take it out a lot. (laughs) But do you just, I mean, you've got to just constantly be wanting to pound the shit out of people. Actually, it's just the opposite, because that's all I do all day. It's like, you know, like you do shows every day, right? You go home and you're like, like, if somebody says, hey, make me laugh, funny guy. You know, you're probably like, dude, fuck you. It's like when you get, after a show, you end up just, you want to just kind of decompress and everyone's like, so tell me the story. And you're like, man, I'm just fucking done. Like, I'm just fucking done. Now, kid, are you, you're training right now, right? Yeah, every day. Yeah. Uh, but aren't you? Aren't you training? Do you have a fight coming up? Yeah, December fourteenth. Okay, so that's t- time off. You could totally eat like pizza and shit, right? Um, I mean, I could eat pizza the day before the fight if I wanted, but really, you know, I'm, I'm an independent contractor. I do what I want, but oh yeah, you know, it's a matter of whether you want to win or lose. All right. God. But obviously, you train. When do you start like that serious training camp? Like you, you we always hear about you doing the training camp. Right, do you start right. that closer to the fight, or are you doing that now? I don't really do like what most people consider a camp. You know, like I try to stay in good shape all the time and then basically all i do is just pick up training more and more as it gets closer to the fight it's not a i don't do like what a lot of people do take a month or two off and then do a six week training camp eight week whatever <coughs> you know i stay in good shape and then when it's time to uh, get ready for the fight and pick things up i'm already ready to do it is it were you always a brawler like your whole life is that how you how you get into it or was it like yeah, you needed yeah. discipline kind of a thing no, actually, I got into it because I was a drug addict. And really? Uh, <laughs> Boy, Shut up! I just perked up. What kind of drugs? What kind of drugs? drugs? You? Um, my drug of choice was mainly like meth and coke, uppers. You know, what I mean, meth was probably the one I was the worst on. And uh, but you know, I had. Do you, do you? I mean, I, I've tried pretty much every drug. Done probably every drug in excess at some point. Have you heard that new drug that's like uh, makes people peel their skin off? That's just oh, becoming popular. It's what? called like. Uh, What's it called? How does it's that called like wait, no no it's like it's like people that that uh, can't popular. afford I think it's meth they buy this now because it's super super cheap but the problem is that you start getting these humongous lesions or you start peeling your skin off and they That's show a these terrible side yeah it's effect. horrible how, how is that catching on how yeah, is that getting because it's popular? so cheap 
Oh, yeah, well, I Roscoe Polamine. You ever heard of this one? Mm-hmm. What? So the one, uh, I think it's in Brazil, right, where it's popular? Uh, Columbia. Or Colombia, yeah. So they, you can take like just a little bit of powder and they'll spray it in your face. And then it makes you completely, uh, what is it, submissive or? Submissive? Yeah, it's your, su- Shh. yeah it takes all your willpower. Take all your money Shut up. Goes, wait, wait, yeah, yeah. Say that to them. I tell the story. So it makes you lose your will. I tell you to go to the bank, go get all your money out, give it to me, and you say okay, and then you don't remember. What shit. is this like a zombie drug? It's called scopolamine. Yeah. There's like there's like documentaries on it. Uh, it's crazy, dude. It sounds like it's extract like that cat virus that's bit in Brazil. You know the, the yeah the. Yeah, the, Whatever. Joe always talks about that cat virus where that's why I'm always afraid I'm going to get it. That scared right. the shit out of me when he said that because I have, you know, Fuck certain anger. Virus. Like I, all the all the symptoms he listed, I was oh, like, yeah. shit, I have all of <laughs> that. That's all yeah. me. And he's scared to test it because I was like, let's, I mean, you, I'll pay for mine. You pay for yours. We'll go get tested. I'm sure it's just an easy blood test, test for that. And toxoplasma. What, what is this shit? Toxoplasticity. It's, it's, uh, it's a... God, he said it so many times. I can't even remember now. It's a virus that that that, that most people uh, who have cats, uh, especially outdoor cats, feral cats, feral and cats. that's why it's super popular in What's certain countries. Right. I won't. I'm not even going to get in because I know that that certain countries are very touchy about it. Right. But uh, certain countries are a lot of feral cats, and there's a bunch of cat shit around, and it's like gets in the fumes, and then you get this toxoplasticity or something, and it makes you. Um, it makes you roll the dice on life all the time. Yeah. Like fucking take chances. Makes guys like like angry. And yeah. Stuff makes women submissive. Makes women submissive. <laughs> yeah. Wait, I'm going to fucking Rio, and I hope they don't do that powder stuff. No. Is that where it's Colombia, not not Brazil? Yeah, I don't like the Columbia. fact that somebody can just walk up on you and then all of a sudden, hey, you're doing the drug. You know yeah. what I mean? I yeah, like to have to work yeah. to ingest well, it. And, and they say then that. you don't you don't remember anything that right. happened and everything. And then so, you know, back back shitty. in the days when I used to go to Grateful Dead shows, there would be those fuckers that put uh, acid in squirt guns and they'll just walk around and squirt oh, people. Fuck it, that! I, I that's not that. cool. That really and so that's exactly what you, people always used to say. I never yeah, saw yeah. it. How much does it affect you though if you get squirted with it? Well, I mean. If you put like one drop in your eyeball, you're tripping for the next twelve hours. Yeah, <laughs> but if, your eye, if but they're I'm, doing, yeah, if they right. could do like a rational amount, like put one hit in a squirt gun filled with water, and I get like a, a sixteenth of a hit of acid, that might be a cool thing. Like I don't, I got <laughs> I slipped do. acid. I got slipped acid. Me and my buddy Ozzy one time in uh, at spring weekend, like at a big uh, like fraternity sorority thing, and we drank this drink, and this du- the dude was like, "Welcome to the team" or something, like that. and I was like, "What?" And he's like, it's acid. And, we were, and me and Ozzy were like, M-, we thought it was fucking, like, just a drink. And then we ended up, we ended up having a really good time. But then in our room, uh, we got back to our room, and he was in the bathroom. Ozzy was in the bathroom. And I was like, what's going on? And he's like, don't look in the, uh, don't look in your eye. And I was like, what? And he goes, I'm fucking stuck, man. And then I came in, and he was like, I fucking, and then we watched fishing shows all night and held each other in a bed. Oh. And just fucking, <laughs> yeah. Well, if you're not properly prepared for it, because it is a trip, and you can't stop it, that's the thing. That's like, the mushrooms, only can, thing that can, sucks can, about it. You can maybe take a nap. If you're drunk, you can take a nap. But once you take that acid, you better be ready to stay awake for the night. I don't have that kind of commitment. I, have, I personally haven't seen it in over probably uh, 10, it's, 10 it's years. It's come back in L.A. Is it making a comeback? Yeah, for sure. Mo- more people are doing acid that I know than mushrooms nowadays, it seems like, which That's is a, a total flip than what it was like two years like ago. Good, yeah, yeah. Like good shit? Or yeah, good like, shit, though, like, right. like the next shit. So wait, so you took all that energy that, that, was, that was technically an addictive personality and, and put it right into fighting? Exactly, yeah. Holy uh, shit. You know what I mean? I was basically like my life was going nowhere, you know what I mean? Obviously living that life, you know, so... Um, it just took, you know, something uh, to wake up to every day. You know what I mean? It's like I'd go work in a factory and trip balls all night and do coke or whatever. Or I could go fucking work out and hopefully do something with myself, right? <coughs> That's fucking awesome. I wish I could take all my addictive energy and put it into my stand-up. I'd be fucking amazing. Oh, yeah. I think we all would. I would be. <laughs> I would be. Dude, I got to be honest with you. My dad was addicted to speed for, uh, he didn't know it. Like he, I mean, he, and even if he hears this, he'd be like, "Come on, that's not fucking true." But the doctors were giving him the fen that is the other fen. There were two fens, and fen fen. Do you remember fen fen? The one that killed everybody. Yeah, there was there was one that was a it, what it was it was an amphetamine, uh, fen, fen some. Adderall. It's it, it basically was it basically was Adderall, and <clears throat> they give it to him for a diet, and so he would take it in the morning, and it lasted like ten hours, and. He would. He, I remember him being like, "Buddy, I sit at the office and I work at this desk. I don't even fucking move. I don't even get up to pee. Like I'm fucking. I get so much fucking work done. Like my workouts are amazing. I feel fantastic. Little hard time sleeping. Little jittery. 
And then he gave me. I came back one Easter. I was I had been drinking, and I and uh on the plane, and I, it was Easter morning, and I was like, I need to take a nap. And he's like, No, take one of my pills. You'll be fine. I'm like, I took it. I'm like, Dad, this is like cheap coke. Yeah. Like, where where you're fucking eating speed? And he's like, No, the doctor gives it to me. But he had to like he had to make a conscious choice to stop taking them because wow. it's it's hard. Yeah. It's it's the hardest part is that waking up in the morning and being like like it's like quitting coffee. Going, I gotta I fucking need something to just mm-hmm. jumpstart me. What's I mean, crazy, my every day for, the, I mean, my whole life, I wake up zero energy, and then like I'll take like a half an Adderall <laughs> if I have to do something here or there. It's like, oh my god, this is how I'm supposed to feel like. This is how what normal people like. I could probably go to the doctor and just be like, oh yeah, you totally need this shit. Yeah, yeah. I, I like that you bring up that you take the half an Adderall, but it's just assumed that it's illegally. Right. Like, oh, yeah. you know, I, yeah. I mean, I could go get a prescription, yeah. but yeah. I'll just keep black marketing. Let's <laughs> keep blowing no. fucking 12th graders. I got, I, got, I got Adderall because my friend got addicted to it, and it was fucking his life up and fucking everything up. And so I had to have, like, that power talk with him, and he gave me his Adderall. I was like, I promise Good we'll never call. do it again. And then he didn't do it. He hasn't done it since. But then I had this bottle of Adderall. I'm like, do I just throw this shit away? No, I'm just going to Crazy gonna... talk. <laughs> yeah, you're not going to waste a bottle of Adderall. That's but I've had silly. it for, like, almost a year and a half, and it was only, like, 12 pills. I'll take, like, one-fourth. And it's amazing what just that one fourth would do. Yeah. I'll, I'll like rip through all this new material, or I'll put up a million podcasts. Or yeah, I can see where yeah. you get addicted to that, though, yeah. where you become adjusted to that. And yeah. You can't function without it. It makes perfect sense. I just that's why I like a nice even lazy all day long. I never like right. get above lazy. Yeah. So now, do you drink? Do you drink <laughs> or smoke weed or anything? Uh, Nothing. Uh, I don't do shit anymore, man. Just dip. Yeah. Dip, dip's really hard to fucking quit, dude. I've quit like ten times, man. But I'm a hillbilly. It's if you put, if, where'd you grow up? Uh, here in Ohio, but you know my whole family is from Kentucky. They all uh, worked on tobacco farms and oh yeah, you should. You should my blood. You know, mm-hmm. I mean? you should see Jay Snyder. Jay Snyder. You know Jay Snyder? I think I know. Jay Snyder is one of the fucking funniest dudes. But he's a hillbilly from Ohio. But his whole family grew up in Kentucky. And he fucking him and his twin brother got. I mean, they got arrested. They went to jail so many fucking times. So uh, that so much, one time he he was going in. He was going in and his as his brother to go into jail. So he went and got changed his tattoo because they knew he had that t- tattoo so that night he went in he was like i'm going in tomorrow to prison as my brother when they do fucking the, the, do the thing they're gonna go that's not you're not your brother you're you so he changed his tattoo gets fucking hammered goes into prison wakes up the next morning in prison brand brand new tattoo and his brother's right next to him going i'm in his you <laughs> oh shit what a great story! <laughs> the, the, the two of them, the two that Jay, Jay is one of the funniest fucking guys. Um, but uh, but you should you'd love his you'd love his comedy. Do you like watch a lot of comedy? Uh, I don't watch a ton ton, but I love it. You Are know? you gonna stay there for the night show? I just, I just don't watch shit really. You know, I mean. It's just all, at all. How, yeah. how many hours a day are you working out? Is it like five, six hours a day? Probably six, seven hours in the gym. Not necessarily working out that whole time, but easily, you know. Are you guys ever just time. not working out? Is there ever a time in the gym where everyone's just sitting around? Yeah, and you for sure. Motivate yeah. each other? That's what I mean. You know, I'm in the gym six, seven hours, probably, you know, four or five of those hours are working out. You know, part of it's warming up, cooling down, bullshitting with everybody, you know, talking about game plans, uh, you know, what we need to work on, you know. Like, are you watching tapes? Is it, does that work like that? Are For you sure, watching yeah. all of his fights and stuff right For now? sure, yeah. That's, uh, I, I do have to add that uh, you're, you're on a six-fight win streak, mm-hmm. and uh, you have not lost a fight since you saw me do comedy here last time. So, I mean, yeah. I'm just saying. I'm about to stay for the show, then. As far as, I'd, you know, good luck charms go. Yeah. I'd say, I'd say that means something. Right? Yeah, that you. Yeah. Everyone's giving me weird looks right now. All right? I'm just saying. Yeah, yeah. I want to feel like I had something to do with it. I've seen your comedy, and I feel like losing. It's, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna chop that little chunk out of this. That's, I'm leaving it in on my podcast. Oh, yeah, I, don't edit, I, don't edit, I don't edit anything. If it happens, it happens. I le- last last my last podcast two podcasts ago, I gave out my fucking email address on accident, boom, 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 boom. and I was like, because and I was like, I was like, oh, I'll just edit that out, and I posted it, and then I started getting emails. Do you want to do you want to take a look at this? This is how many fucking emails I got that I ha- haven't opened. Look That's at this. How the people look at this. Look at this. I got you beat. Eighteen thousand seven hundred and sixty-one. Wow. Mine just stopped. Yeah. Oh <laughs> shit. Yeah. I, I, I'm from giving out my email. Everyone fucking emailed me, and I was like, I was like, let's do it. Let's do an experiment. My email is maryfield2000 at yahoo.com. No one email him. Just no, no just one let's email. See how him. many people email? Him. <laughs> no one email. Just fucking silence. Crickets. Every day he goes to that and he's like, "LL Bean, that's it." You know I'm gonna check every morning. The second this is posted, I'm just gonna constantly be refreshing. 
I we, put my number on Twitter not too long ago. That was pretty fucking bad. Oh, yeah. That, that was pretty bad. <laughs> yeah, because uh, so I was trying to DM it to somebody, right? And it oh. ended up pushing the wrong button or whatever yeah. kind of stupid shit I did. You're a hillbilly. Yeah, yeah. You I, take that I don't the wrong know. Way, by the no, way. man. I, mean, I don't know how to use a fucking computer, right? So uh, that's mine. That's um, the, dude, the, I got like. 30 calls in like 10 minutes. Like, who the fuck keeps calling me? You know, and I don't ever answer my phone, so I was just looking at How like, were those calls? Like, if, did you answer? For I didn't answer none of them. Oh, that would be great. I just yeah. could imagine they'd be just screaming fans. <laughs> right. You're so great. I got a few voicemails, and they that's when should. I realized it was, you yeah. know, my number was on Twitter. You I want to trace your beer. steps. You think someone forget somebody said come out and give us, a, give us a beer, right? I can get you a beer. What do you want? No, no, no. Don't get up. Fucking. We'll, no, we'll, uh, well, they'll just... see us at some point. Hey, wait. What's the uh, what's the jack off window before a fight? The like jack off window. Don't, two weeks. Two weeks. Finally, That's... we're getting to the good questions. Two weeks. They're like, how? Damn, I've been fucking up. <laughs> 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 nah, I, I got a wife, man. So. Oh, uh, uh, wait. You don't jack off anymore? I mean, you know, That's she tough. might be listening, man. Oh, okay. Yeah, oh, yeah. are there well, any guys that do it like five minutes before the fight, just and then tell the guy? I know people that have, have fucked their girls the day of the fight. That's really? Yeah. It helps them relax, you know. And I, down. My wife will give take one for the team every now and then. <laughs> I've seen I her. I, like, show, I got a big meeting, and she'll just be like, all right, I know you got this. Because no, I need to plant my seed the second I land. second I land, I need to do it to stake my ground. I'm like a fucking tiger. I got to piss where I fucking sleep. And then if I have a big meeting, she'll be like, okay. All right. Ugh. And you can just see it. Just, I love I, when they feel obligated to do it after you're married for a while, and it just yeah. becomes like routine. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, there's no obviously no romance involved in it. Louis, what did Louis C.K. say that he was jacking off Everything using his great. wife's Everything body? Perfect. He goes, "I'm just jacking off with your body." God, that's great. I watched, and then Louis. they got divorced. I had never seen Louis, and uh, I just went through a divorce, so I watched Louis, and uh, just I was out in L.A. and I, I had a lot of free time, so I watched all the episodes, and I can't do anything about being a divorced comic because he covered everything you yeah. know what i mean like every episode it'd be like oh there's another thing i could have wrote about but now i can't because louis did it fucking brilliantly oh well know? the fucking day i had i told you this the day I, week i had george i went and worked with the tell and then the next week i worked with louis and i had just had a kid and i had all this kid material and i just watched him do what now is the quintessential louis changing space of louis ck yeah. i watched him rehearsing all of it and i was like i got fucking nothing like i'm gonna suck a big fat dick so, um, it's like that South Park oh, episode, you know. I'm gonna, every, yeah, I'm gonna suck a big fat dick. <laughs> it's like Simpsons have done everything type thing, you know. You, you right. know, there's gonna be you, you do a joke about an iPhone. There's a million other people that have the you same. You drive yourself nuts. I haven't heard your jo- iPhone that. joke yet. Uh, I yeah. haven't. Nope. That, I mean, I, I heard it yesterday. I've never heard yeah. someone do that. <laughs> God, oh, sorry, just All these, these are my dudes. I introduce you guys. This is Tony Ramos. He's actually the multiple world records at 181 pounds powerlifting one of the strongest guys in the oh, world nice this is my coach mark beecher and muay thai do you know do you know so. greg jackson i know who he is and I'm training with him in a week oh i shouldn't fucking say that damn it's dead motherfucker oh well i'll leave it in why 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 would that be bad to say that because uh oh, i got a big fight i got a big fight i got a big fight coming up <laughs> <laughs> no i'm trying to lose weight no it's uh i i fucking never mind um to fucking, I'm such an idiot. I'm not real good at keeping secrets. I am so fucking bad. You've actually done that a few times this week. You've let people know, like, th- things about your, your show, your uh, trip flip. Right? Yeah, I fucking keep letting the fucking cat out of the bag. Do you get gotta, in trouble? You ever get in trouble for that? I ever no, come back and luckily, not a lot of people uh, care. Yeah. Yeah. You know, you've been getting re- recognized here this week more I've than I've been ever. getting recognized like fucking, like I committed a crime. Like, it, you, you've you been with me, and it's like just random as fuck. Th- there was a girl... In the show last night, in our in, at lunch last night with us, uh, yesterday we're having lunch. She comes over and she goes, "Bert," and I go, "Yeah." She was on Bert the Conqueror's pilot episode and rode a roller coaster with me. And I'm, I know her because we hung out a bunch. I was like, "Shay," just she was at, like, at yeah. the bar at Bar Louie. She fuck. just couldn't be more random. Yeah, yeah, that's insane. It's pretty funny this town uh, that like the local celebrity is like really big, like a big deal here. Like if you even were a TV guy, or like something. if you're, you're like, there's a weatherman that 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 was really popular. Everyone like he, I'm like he could sit there and he'll just sign autographs like nonstop. People would just come up, can I get That's an autograph? Crazy. And and he like went through a drug problem at one point, and he had like on the air like like he said, oh, I'm sorry, you know, I've been addicted to whatever speed. And this is like the weatherman. Like why are you telling us yeah. all this information? <laughs> he lets the community down. Yeah, there's a guy named Fred Reichert, and he's pretty much 
it's like the, the head honcho here in Columbus, Ohio, and he owns a dealership. And it was at one point, <laughs> supposedly the world's largest dealership or Ohio's whatever. And he got he was so big that one time, supposedly what happened is he got pulled over in his Ferrari with a shitload of cocaine and a hooker. And they made a deal with him that if he donates the Ferrari to the D.A.R.E. program, the drugs against whatever, uh, that they will take it off his record and not arrest him or anything like that. So now the Columbus police and, like, the downtown police division have, like, this Lamborghini, bright that's yellow Lamborghini that says D.A.R.E. on the side of it. I think it's funny that you don't – that nobody that does drugs knows what D.A.R.E. actually stands for. Yeah. That, I think that's the beauty drugs of Drugs are <laughs> – what is it? Right? I don't even know. Everyone? Idea. Yeah, that's it. Drugs are right, everyone. Drugs are Just right. Just saying, no. everyone. <laughs> <clears throat> I, this is the first time I've been to Columbus where I realized how large the um, gay and lesbian population is. It's one of the biggest. I But I've never... I don't know if it's just like I, I, the first night. Everyone was like, "We we have more gay people than San Francisco," and I was like, "Oh, I didn't know there was a competition going on." Oh, yeah. yeah, and then yeah, and <laughs> and uh, and uh, then wait, you know what? That's so weird because there should be there. Are, I bet there are places closeted. There are more. Well, yeah. I mean, you can't count those numbers, though. Yeah. No, but we also should. got more straight people too. So I, don't. I, I think they judge. Oh, by you got more air- straight people than San Francisco yeah, too. Yeah, yeah, so oh. <laughs> Don't judge. I think yeah, they yeah. judge it by air quality, though. Like, this has a higher poop, like, in the air type. Yeah, I'm sure that's how they do it. Whole thing. The whole <laughs> Poop? <laughs> now I feel like <laughs> Joe. Now I feel like I'm on a podcast. Exactly. You don't ignore him. <laughs> <laughs> no. Uh, j- th- oh, Brian. She, uh, I, but I noticed that dude. I noticed, I, for some reason, I've been noticing a lot more dudes. We were talking about this. Holding hands than ever before. Like than ever before, and Where I don't see out just walking around the just walking around here. <laughs> yeah, walking around behind this the, big mall complex here. So behind, that, behind know, the UDF, yeah, and and like and they do like to shop. So and we were saying that uh, we were saying that it's probably because like straight people stop holding hands in like high school. Yeah, like it's like we're like eh, we're done. We got it. You're with us. Let's go. Unless like you know like unless there's like it's snowing and it's slippery. But uh, but and then and then we were saying you know I guess they do that just because it, it's a it's like a it's like a a stamp of freedom of like we're, well because when you, know. you see a man and a woman together you assume they're together so they don't have to hold hands but Bert and I were walking around today and no one would necessarily assume we were gay and if we were gay and we wanted people to assume we were gay the best way to do it would be to hold hands right I almost wanted to hold your hand well I mean I I kind of thought that's why this whole conversation came up to be yeah. honest with you I didn't want to I didn't want to say anything but I felt like but then the joke wrong. we were saying is like uh like, can't believe people are offended by dudes, two dudes holding hands. And then, what we were, I can't remember what we were saying, but we, they, they were like, oh, you should see what we do in, behind closed oh, doors. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> you think this is bad? Oh, fucking finally! A fucking beer! Oh my Holy God. shit! On it. Hey, can I, can I get a Heineken from you? Yeah. Thank you. Could I get a, yeah. bud, a Bud Light? Bud Light? Please? Big one? Uh, let's go with the little one right now. Do you guys want anything? I'm just drinking want? water. Oh, I need water, too. I just worked out, but I wasn't in the gym for five hours. I was in the gym for 30 <laughs> minutes. Workout. Why don't you compare workouts okay. with Matt right now? Let's, let's, let's okay. go through what you do, Bert. <coughs> I start then... with a, like, about a, uh, maybe like a half mile walk. On a Wii Fit, right? At a three uh, on the treadmill, just to kind of get my iPod straight. Is three the speed or the angle? The speed. No angle at this point? The speed, no angle right now. That, that's like my warm-up just to get my legs loose. I was wearing brand-new compression pants I bought. Yeah, you got to get yeah, those so, in. You guys know compression oh, pants. Yeah. It really helps with walking at a three, and so <laughs> and so then and then and then I actually did a pretty hardcore workout today for me. This was it. I start jogging at a five for a minute, then a six for a minute, then a seven for a minute, then an eight for a minute, then I bring it back down to a five, then I jog, then I run at a seven at a two incline, uh, take it down to a jog, then uh, at a no incline I run at a nine. And then I do like intervals like that for 45 second intervals. I, I had it on my podcast. It's a fitness special. My buddy Chris Ty Walker runs me through. And the top max is you are running at a seven at an eight incline, and you are running at a 12 on the treadmill at a sprint. And so you do those and drop it down and do those and drop it down. And then you get, I run, it's a total of like, I'll get to like three miles by the end. It was a 33 minute workout. And I was done. I was fucking exhausted. My, f- I looked so fucking fat. Like it, I don't know if it's the mirror or me, but it was like I, was, I wanted to fucking throw up. I was like, how does how does this happen to a body? See, that's why I don't work out because you're supposed to feel good afterwards, and no one ever talks about <laughs> feeling good. It sounds like it, that it sounds terrible. It, it, yeah, the workout horrible. sounded kind of rough. I mean, it's a, it's it, you it's, guys were nodding your head yeah. like that made sense. Is that a good workout? Is that it's, it's, it's a good? Yeah. That's all I do is running. You need and to try I, Tony's executive workout. What is it? So we do sauna for ten minutes, hot tub for ten minutes. Yeah. 
lay in the pool for 10 minutes. Oh, I dig this. Back to the sauna for 10 minutes. I like Can we incorporate, so uh, if we incorporate <laughs> champagne, I'm in. Yeah. <laughs> drink then, while we're doing it? <laughs> I know, I forgot steam room for 10 minutes. Dude, I yeah. love a fucking sauna. I Dude. love going into the sauna. It's executive I, workout. I just wish that the, the sweat would come out dark, like the impurities in your body, like mud, just pouring <laughs> off That's you. That's what Joey Diaz always says he does when he does acupuncture. He goes, yeah, it's, it's just a bunch of brown juice. And, and I'm like, oh, what? are you serious? I don't think that's supposed to happen. No, that's that's not, that doesn't sound, that sounds like an infection. That's what yeah. you're describing. So wait, what is like, a, like, like, do you lift weights? Yeah. And then, and then. Uh, yeah, it's hard to even describe. Like, So yesterday we did a pretty decent workout. So we did the treadmill <laughs> On an incline of uh, 15 and a speed of 10, so you do that oh, for shit. for one minute the first time. That's a fucking and beast then, right there. And then try to max out for the second time, try to get a minute again, which is pretty rare. And then you do 10 seconds on, 10 second or 20 seconds off, uh, 10 times, and then 10 seconds on, 10 seconds off for 10 times. Mother, and you're pretty much dead after that. But then we do like a carry, like say a dead ball, medicine ball, like 60 pounds overhead. For like five laps on the treadmill? No, no, no. Like five laps down the mat and back. Oh, really? And then um, usually do like five or ten rope climbs, um, and then do some drilling and hit pads, uh, wrestle, whatever kind of thing. Do you know what I did the other day that was pretty fucking hard? I put the incline at a four, I put the speed at a four, and I grabbed just a thirty-pound kettlebell and walked three miles with it. That's legit, bro. And I was like, just fucking, and you just going from hand to hand because your hand by the end you're just hugging it like get the fuck out of here. <laughs> That's legit. I, I like I like a good workout. I'm I like to I like to make it to the point where I'm a, you know where your body feels like it's going to shit its pants and you can't stop it and your you know your butthole has no integrity. If literally <laughs> if it cannot Speak hold the yourself. shit back. <laughs> My butthole has no integrity. That's a t-shirt. My butthole has no integrity. I'm going to fucking die. That's good. <laughs> and I had this cough on the treadmill today so I was fucking all over the place. <laughs> We've been drinking pretty hard. There's been a very fucking hardcore drinking weekend, because ever since I opened that house of beers, right down there, it's like. You open that place? No, no, but it's a big oh, Florida no, place. Ever since yeah. they opened yeah, it. Yeah, ever since I opened it. It's well, an, yeah, that's exactly what you just said, by the way. Oh, is it really? Yeah, you said you oh, yeah. opened it. I don't fucking know. I that. Maybe they had you there to cut the ribbon because you're like the most famous alcoholic in the world, you know. <laughs> It, it is amazing how, how this city is fueled by just alcohol. That's all there is to do here is drink and watch college football. And, and you know what I was thinking? Did you it guys was... go to the game yesterday? Sorry. No, 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 no. We had to work. Uh, oh, okay. We did two yeah, shows. Yeah. I was thinking. You could have like, tailgated, you know what I mean? I, we had to work. Uh, the, yeah. Our first show started at 7. Hey, the game started at 8. You could have tailgated all day. Yeah, we could have. And then I would have been a fucking sick, hot That's mess. what Tony Hinscliffe yeah. did. Last, really? Yeah, last night. He came in here after tailgating, after going to the football game, and then come, came here and drank more. Holy shit. He started, I think, around 1 or 2 in the tailgate. And he's only 110 pounds. I, I know. He, well, he also just drinks Chardonnays. I'm just kidding. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> um, I was thinking yesterday, on Saturday, it must be really hard to be a blood in this city. Like, oh, yeah, because of the, cause, the, cause of the red. Because <laughs> of the red. Yeah. Uh, it must get really fucking confusing. There's a lot of senseless murders here. Must, like, holy <laughs> shit, they're all over here. Like this the is the one place they don't go. They're Crips and like, Bloods are like, you know what, let's just switch it up. Let's do, like, lavender. <laughs> Probably not lavender. Yeah. Like a nice teal. Um, you know, <clears throat> Kansas City has the same problem, then, with the... With, with the, the blues, cri- with the Crips, I, I don't know. I guess blue. it's a pretty fucking ridiculous statement because we do have the Dodgers in LA. So what the fuck am I saying? And the Angels. Ah, <laughs> I'm a fucking idiot. I'm so ready to go home. You have no fucking idea. You get like that. I find that uh, I feel really sorry for the Saturday night crowds a lot of times because by the time I get to Saturday, I'm kind of done. You know what I mean? Oh, really? Like the excitement. Like I really. Well, if there's a Sunday show, then maybe it stretches a day. But I always think Sunday show is always the best show because it's like there's usually one, so there's really not that time limit thing of having two shows. And then it's usually you're, you're, you, you have like a set for that, that club and that audience where it's Sunday. It's just like the best set ever because you've been doing you know kind of like a different version of your set based on the city mixed with the club, the stage. Yeah, you do all the local stuff yeah. you've worked on all week. Yeah. Well, best. you came. You started out doing comedy here, right? Bro? Yeah, this is my, my <coughs> the first uh, – Time I ever went on stage. Was this, this is this world. where the Bob Hope joke happened? Yeah, and this is where the Bob Hope. Do you ever joke. hear that story? Uh-uh. <laughs> Brian, Brian was. Uh, uh, this is I don't know what year is this. This is like five years ago. No, this is what, this is like probably eleven years ago. Eleven years ago. Twelve years ago. Um, Brian uh, told a joke on stage that it was uh, the day Bob Hope died. It was the day Bob Hope died, and he said, uh, "You want to you want to 
Yeah. So they, they used to fill the open mics here with uh, retirement home people because they would be a free show for them. And, they, and then they, you know, the club made money. And so it was the day Bob Hope died. And I was like, oh, I'm going to do this edgy joke. So I came out and this is right after the, when, they, when the war was going on after 9-11 and shit like that. And I go, hey, did you guys hear uh, Bob Hope died? Do you think they flew out of his body to Iraq to entertain all the dead troops? <laughs> and he got he got booed off stage, booed yes. like booed. by old people. Yeah, booed him until he had to leave, and he didn't touch the stage again for fucking like, eight years. Yeah, it was a while. <clears throat> so I mean, they that one joke ruined him. I was, well, it was also because there was only one comedy club here in Columbus, so, so to get stage time, you had to like do these like where they actually had everybody try, do their best minute, and then they had these judges, which were other comics, to say who were going to go up on open mics so really? they would just pick all their friends and never pick you so you would try to get like a stage time for like a month and a half and then you finally get wait like, have you seen Stroop since uh yeah yeah i okay. see him every time i come have you do you know dave no oh you should meet no. him he's a big well he's i mean he's a big wrestler fan but he's a big mma guy too like he's okay. a he's like you'll meet him and you he's guys the he's, owner here yeah he's right? just so, like you guys yeah. he's okay. just like you guys like like hey like me like me Is the that three of us will, yeah you guys well you don't you don't yeah. song and dance to win someone over like you just yeah. like like w- the three of us are like, hey man, how you doing? Woo, tell him about your ears. Like you know, like like, <laughs> but like you guys are like, hey, and then he'll be like, hey, and then you guys, and then he'll be like, I I've seen you fight, and you'll be like, oh thanks, nice club, thank you. Right, right. And he's then really that's selling it. it, by the like, way. He's really right. making you right. want to meet him. No, right. no, but he's, he's, he's a really great guy. I love Dave. Um, the so yeah, Brian did that joke, and then Brian went on stage last night, and I could I was wondering if there's any nerves. Is that is that your first time back on the stage since since on this stage? Yeah. Oh no, I've been on the stage before, okay. uh, with Rogan. Oh, okay, I used to come here all the time with him. Um, so but, they kept booing until you walked off stage. Like I mean, uh, it was I, I mean, it's, it's every in my comment. head, it was just awful. So yeah. you know, I so maybe it's not as bad. It was as you. it was more it was. It probably uh, what, wasn't what made, I want to know like what made you think to make fun of a dead dude the day he died. Like, uh, <laughs> I mean, because on, my man. comedy heroes, the day the, he died, right? The, the comedy yeah. heroes I had were uh, Doug Stanhope, and that was something that Doug would that do. There's a, there's a, there's a thing. I don't. Is there an equivalent to this in fighting? There's a thing that in all comics. We want to we want to tell the joke that is the hardest to tell. We want to pull off the sickest joke so that our peers look at us and go, "Holy shit! Did you hear?" Like 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 Kurt uh, Kurt Metzger has my new my new favorite joke that was like that was like it, it was it was the perfect example. He was talking about Trayvon Martin and he was saying he was like. He was like, man, I'm just sick. We're in Montreal doing a podcast. And he goes, I'm just sick and tired of this fucking hoodie movement. They put Everyone's wearing hoodies to talk about it. And, and they even put one on Martin Luther King. And they were like, would you shoot this man because of what he was wearing? And he was like, they shot him in a suit. Like, <laughs> and so that was my favorite. That, but that's like every comic wants to tell like the Trayvon joke and get away with it and get people to laugh at something they don't want to laugh at. And so something like that is like the day the day died. It's almost like the day the crocodile hunter, hunter died. Fucking it was. Was. It, was, oh, it was like they pulled hunting cards, right, and you got right. ten tags, yeah. and you just got free game on the fucking crocodile hunter. But like, is there equivalent like that in fighting? Fuck, I don't know. I guess you would look I at mean, like a more reckless fighter, right? Like you wouldn't, you probably wouldn't style yourself after someone like a, like a Stanhope of fighting, right? Because that'd be too reckless. This is a Stan good question Hope, to ask, Joe. Stanhope yeah. is a. Uh, I mean, we all more like just is like just win, right? You know what I mean? Maybe like. Yeah, like Anderson might do that shit, and you've seen what happened to him, right? Yeah, yeah. the third Matrix <laughs> movie. <laughs> I, you know, I, I, let's go ahead and talk about that since you brought it up. I, uh, I, he was being extra cocky that fight, and I, I think we've kind of wanted that to happen for a while, right? Not me. I'm actually a huge Anderson fan. But, well, I am too, but, but it's not like, me either. You don't like him. Oh, if you don't yeah, like him, yeah, then I thought at least one of you would back me up. I love that. Dude. I think he's a great guy. I love no, the cocky. He's, <laughs> he's an amazing fighter, but it's like when somebody like no, I don't stand know, your ground. I guess when, well, I guess when you let your guard down, when you let your guard down, and you get a little over cocky every now and then. You need to get, and this is coming from a like guy this, with man. flaccid, you know. Yeah, he did. Parts. The, he did the I, same like shit. I've nothing. In no you know, muscles. however many fights before, and everybody was like, "Wow, that's so amazing! He's the best ever!" Blah blah. And then he messes up once, and it doesn't work. And now he, you know, everybody's, like, "Oh, why did he do that? Fucking stupid!" Well, my you thing know, is, he, is now he's going to come back. Do maybe a little bit less of the shenanigans and just be a fucking possibly, a beast, you know possibly. What I mean? like, I, possibly. I, do you see him going back to the same kind of? You know, you know it's hard to tell around? with him. You know, I don't know. Like, I, I think it's. Just, I don't know where his mind's at. You know, what I mean, because to be able to do shit like that, like you got to really pretty much not care if you win, right? Because you know, you know that could happen in any of those other fights, right? 
but if if it succeeds, you know, you succeed big. If you lose, you lose big. Yeah. So I don't know, you know, where where his mind's going to be at so after something like that, right? Then. He'd be a risk taker. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. The um, so I think if I was a fighter, <coughs> I think I would be a showman. Like I would be, I would be the guy that I would think, you know, the fucking taunting and shit like that. That would be that would be my gameplay because I think that's how I do stand up a little bit. Is I like to fuck around. I like to take dangerous chances and get away with them. You know, right, right. Like I wouldn't be like uh, I wouldn't be like Floyd Mayweather. I have a really hard time liking Floyd Mayweather. And I, like I, I watch. That. I like him. Just in case you're listening, <laughs> Floyd, I just, just want to be on the opposite <laughs> side of this one time. I, fu- I watch that. I watch that show, and I just feel like he's being taken advantage of by so many people, and he doesn't know it. And it's like he's making Floyd. Yeah, like oh, he's got so many people on his payroll that everyone knows that doesn't work out well. Yeah, they like they have a guy that holds their mouthpiece. They have a guy. Yeah. Bro, Floyd, Floyd, I don't know if he's, you know, one of the, the best fighters because he won't go out and prove it, right? Because right. he only picks guys, you know, that he can beat. Yeah. But as, you know, as a businessman, he's the best ever. Yeah. He wins combat sports. He's the best. He's got the most successful career in the history of the sport. You know, he's not going to be. Did you read that he keeps all his money in one checking account, though? He has one bank account. He has like $130 million. I've heard something like that. You know, I, I heard a story when I lived in Vegas. I, I don't know how true it was, but they said he used to keep all his money in his house. All cash, your gold or whatever. That's smart. And uh, and he he was he apparently he's a really nice guy in real life too. So he would leave his house wide open for all the kids in the the neighborhood to come in and eat popsicles and all shit. And, oh, shit. and one of the kids grew up a little bit and realized he kept all of his money in there and, and robbed him like a million dollars. Jesus, Dude. a little story I heard. I don't know how true it is. I bet you he locked his doors after that. Yeah. So now he don't fuck around no more. Like, I like yeah, that. I like that. Yeah. <laughs> I like that. I like that. Uh, that the Canelo uh, Alvarez. Yeah, I like that guy. I, I wanted him to like. I like that. Uh, that that uh, rough diamond. That you know, like you know how hard it must have been growing up in Mexico with red hair. Like, <laughs> but you know, Louis C.K. is Mexican. Yeah, I was just gonna say that. Yeah, he's half Mexican. What are you doing? Oh, sorry, I was That's a, a Floyd signal. man. He knows when. Like he's seen something in Canelo. You know when he watched the fight, he's seen something, and he's like, man, I can beat this kid. You know, he would, otherwise he would, you know, there's a lot of other guys he could have fought, you know, a lot of other. Can you guys you know. watch boxing? Because I know that, like, you. I, I love you, boxing. I mean, can you watch? I, yeah, I, I just, you know, I don't know. I was never, like, a huge boxing fan, right. but uh, it's just, it's not. Here, here's the enough, difference. You know? Boxing, to see a good fight, you got to watch ten fights. MMA, you got to watch two fights. Dude, you I get, my, my, my blood pressure would raise watching, uh, watching UFC. I remember right when I got my big flat screen, I remember sitting there. And, like, the first one, this is, like, fucking seven years ago. I remember watching it on there. It was, like, on high def. And I just would start sweating. Like, I would, I, I couldn't, but I loved the feeling of, like, white-knuckling a fight. Like, come on! Right, and then you right. find yourself, like, like leaning yeah, yeah, exactly. over. Yeah, you're convulsing. Like, yeah. I'm tightening muscles. Like, I, like I'm part of it. You know? Yeah. Do you, do, you, uh, do, you, do you watch the, all the fights? Of course. I'm still a huge fan. That's crazy. Yeah. It's, it's, it's going to be cool, like, to be... To be a huge fan of a sport you're involved with, and you can you've got front row access, you can see whatever right. the fuck you want to see. It's almost like being a comic when you love comedy, and you can just get to hang out with fucking great comics. And like, we were talking like about me, that like the other me day. right now, like yeah. this this moment right now for me. Yeah, this, yeah. This, yeah. This is uh, like even my more. my last fight. I was sitting down at the press conference with Shogun sitting right next to me. You know, it's unfortunate he lost. You know, because he's all bummed out. But I was sitting there, you know, like, damn, is this fucking real, man? Like, cause he was a part of the reason I started fighting, you know. I was watching him in pride just, you know, like you on the edge of my seat. Like, yeah. fuck yeah, Shogun's fighting. And I'm sitting there beside him. Like, so you still me, have those man. moments then when you meet guys like that. Yeah, always, you know. Yeah, I'm, that's to me, that's yeah. the coolest thing about getting into this business and being on this journey. is like it all leads to this kind of stuff. You right. know what I mean? And the only shitty part about it is like it becomes normal. Like, you know, so I was sitting next to, like, Vanderlei or something. You know, and I've met Vanderlei a bunch of times, and, and now I'm just kind of, oh, it's Vanderlei. And, it's uh, you know, I, I kind of yeah, miss uh, being like, God damn, Vanderlei, fuck yeah. Yeah. You I remember I mean? the first time I met Chappelle, I was a fucking <gasps> bumbling idiot, dude. I couldn't, like, I, it was like, you know how people say, oh, I was speechless? Like, I, for the only time in my entire life, I literally was like, I've, uh, uh, and I just, like, turned Dave and Chappelle? walked away. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I think he still was, lives here, right? Yeah, yeah he was, yeah. I was in Dayton. I told this story on my podcast, like, two weeks ago, but I'll tell it again because it's good. I'm in Dayton Funny Bone. <clears throat> I'm getting paid on Sunday, and like kind of like the protocol when you're getting paid in the comedy clubs is uh, 
they usually shut the door and they, none of the wait staffs allowed in. Like he's just kind of like they go over your numbers, tell you how you did, how you know, you know, kind of. So the door is shut. I'm getting ready to get paid, and then uh, this black dude just walks in. This black kid, and I'm like, I th- it thought it was one of the dudes from the kitchen, and I'm like, motherfucker, like not not motherfucker, oh, but I'm like, I'm like, oh, <laughs> oh shit, oh, it's on. Yeah, now. He's yeah. Somebody from the kitchen. <laughs> yeah. Those are only they're only the only black people that work at the Dayton Funny Bone work in the kitchen, and I know them because I go in and order directly from them. And so the door opens, and it's I'm like one of the kids, and I'm not I'm not mad. I don't I don't care if he knows how much money I make, but in my head I'm like, Doc's gonna say something to him, and then it's fucking Chappelle. And I'm like, huh? and I, it was like seeing a great white shark. I was like, huh? and I, I got real excited. And I go, you're Dave Chappelle. And he was like, yeah. And then I was like, God damn it. I should have been cooler. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> things, I'm fucking, yeah. I'm on fucking TV. I should have been like, hey, what's up, man? Yeah. Hey, hey, man. Yeah. But I was like, I freaked out. I was like, Chappelle. Yeah. I was like, I have a great story about you. He's like, you do? I said, yeah. And I told him a story that he told me one time. And he was like, yeah, it sounds like me. Yeah. I was like, no, it was. I tell everybody. He always comes to the comedy store uh, late at night, like at 1.30 in the morning. And it's cool because it's gotten to the point where he's come so much lately that he knows my name. Because the, the other day he's like, Brian, you got any cigarettes? And I'm like, oh, fuck, he knows my name? Yeah, that's So I just cool. give him a pack of cigarettes. He goes on stage and just smokes them all. And I'm just, it, 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 he's that's awesome. That's enough, right? though, to know that yeah. he knows your name. You yeah. know what I mean? That's he didn't know my name. Cool. So yeah, there, I hope he doesn't remember our encounter. Cause it was so there's a store down there on campus. Apparently, he frequents regularly, right? And I know the chick that's the manager there. She said he's a fucking dick. Really? To everybody except for her, like, cause she know he knows her. Really? He said he's a dick to all. everybody that comes up to him. I don't know if it's true. She's a I feel crazy like that's bitch probably too. Probably not true, right? But I, I mean, think, I, don't I don't know. know. Well, I mean, I mean that the bitch that told me is crazy as shit. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I'm a dick to her, but but you know what it is is is. Uh, is everything's magnified. So, like, that's why it's like it's like when I, t- I tipped that girl yesterday after she recognized me. Right. My waitress goes, <coughs> I either waited on you before or um, I know you. And I said, and she said, do you have a TV show on? Yeah. So then I tipped her. I tipped her. It was a $32 bill, and I tipped her 8 bucks. I was like, that's good. Because I don't want to be like a fancy pants. That was a weird word. But... I, so and then and then uh, and then I got done and I was like I can't fucking tip her eight bucks now I look like a fucking idiot. Yeah, so then TV I threw show. I threw another five dollars on there. Now I look panicky. So yeah. I fucking I'm like you want to rub your back? Like I was fucking <laughs> I couldn't find the right fucking middle ground. But you're nice to people. Then that's well and not that so, yeah, not so, that it wouldn't be nice if Chappelle turned somebody down for a photo. But sometimes you know it's got to happen every fucking second. And, the guys and right. all yeah. that all that want him. All, and this is I read this brit- brilliant article about why he's frustrated. All that wa- all the people that recognize him are frat boys, and they want him to go to Minstrel Show Dave and be like, "I'm rich, bitch. Right. I'm Rick James." They want him to oh, do his yeah. catchphrase. Yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> and he's like, "I'm a person." And you just and 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 I think it's that struggle he had with racism, and that's who's recognizing him, and that's what they want him to do. And he don't want to do it, and when he doesn't do it, I bet they're like, "Fuck him, man! Why wouldn't he? Couldn't he just say I'm rich, bitch once?" Yeah. Well, you, did you see the footage right. of him at that theater when they were yelling that they were yelling it at yeah. him, and then he just sat down and talked for the rest of the set. And I'm gonna get. I say he like had a meltdown. I'm like, no, he just said. You know, if, if you don't want to hear the comedy, I'll just do... What a lot of people don't know, though, is that his comedy has kind of taken that uh, style anyway, where he sits down, like I say, smokes cigarettes, and act li- he acts like he's talking to the audience. And what he's oh, actually okay. doing, it's actually his material. And, right. and it's, yeah. it's very interesting to watch, because I didn't realize until like the third or fourth time after seeing it that I'm like, holy shit, he's doing the same shit he was doing last? That's his... That's what he's doing right now. You know who got me, and, and I'll funny. tell it's it again fuck. because you brought it up earlier, Stanhope. The first time I saw him, I, you know, I'd been doing comedy like a few years, and I watched this guy. He's brilliant. And after the show, I was like, that was amazing. Like, he just, that dude just made up. Yes, that I saw that. Thing, I saw you know? that same thing. And then, like, six months later, I work with him, and it's like five minutes in and into it. I'm like, fuck. That's what he, that's his act. That's yeah. what he does. Yeah. I'm like, that's mm-hmm. the fucking key, yeah. you know? It's brilliant. And he's, like you said earlier, though, that explains the Bob Hope joke, is he's a bad hero to have because he will say anything. Yeah. And you kind of get it in your mind, oh, I should be able to say anything. Yeah. But he's also suffered for that, too. You know what I mean? He, he and I went and did a radio show one time. We were working this uh, gig in Grand Forks, North Dakota, uh, before the man show, before all that. And uh, we got up to do the radio show, and he said, I don't want to do radio. I'm going to get us kicked off, and then we can go get some breakfast. And we went in, and uh, the guy, some country station cracks the mics what's going on and Stanhope said something about sodomizing a midget the night before at the Westward Ho is the hotel or something. That just got a spit take for I the record. God, <laughs> that it just was, got a spit take. He got he got like 
three words out, and I saw the guy grab the fader. He's like, all right, thanks for stopping in. And Doug just got up, no eye contact, said, all right, let's go get some fucking breakfast. It was brilliant. And I was like, you can do that? You can just totally There's, shit on the radio? Yeah. There's yeah. a time where I, I'm sure, like, Josh Blue was here the other night. Do you know who Josh Blue is? He won the last comic standing. He has cerebral palsy. He's a funny guy. Funny as fuck. Funny as fuck. Well, <clears throat> he saw the first show. He watched the first show. He's like, great set. He's like, when are you going to stop telling that machine story? And I was like, never. And he was like, it's going to fucking kill you. He's like, Don't, doesn't it bother you to start it? And I go, it does. The second I say, when I was 22, I got involved with the Russian mafia, I'll... As soon as I say that, I go, this is fucking 12 minutes that I'm committed to doing one thing for 12 minutes and I know how it goes. But it's like, it's like, that's the only reason anyone comes to this fucking show. The yeah. only reason they, like, I, the second I sit on stage, they start going, Let me, like, they, I, if I told it, if I just told that story four times and said goodnight, they'd be like, perfect, that's all yeah. we needed. And that's good, that's a compliment to a comic that you can go, Regan gets that a lot too, where people are like, we just want to hear the hits, man, do all the old jokes, like it's acceptable, yeah. but mm -hmm. then there's guys like Stanhope, if you went and saw him, and he did, if he didn't have a new hour, you'd be like, come on, you know, how long are you going to do the punch in the girl and the... Yeah, face bit or whatever. Be like if you went and see Metallica and didn't hear Inner Sandman. Yeah, oh, you gotta, you gotta do yeah. some of the oldies. Yeah, it's like yeah, yeah. I, no one wants to hear fucking. Bob, I saw Bob Dylan and Wilco and and all these guys and and I, I left before Bob Dylan, but uh, someone said Bob Dylan was writing new material. And we're like, dude, you're fucking eighty. Just play the hits and get the fuck out. <laughs> well, we're what not are you writing, writing about? What are your lyrics about yeah. at eighty? What yeah. is, what's left to Le talk Vitra. about? <laughs> yeah, you have to be out of shit to write about at eighty. For God's sake, <laughs> I can't get a boner. I peed my bed. There you go. <laughs> a that's a good. That's a good. That's a good uh, impression. What time's our show starting? Is it starting right now? Uh, it's starting like right about now. How much time have we done on this podcast? We have done fifty minutes. That's not bad. We'll keep going. Yeah. I th you want to have someone tell them to start the show late? Is it sold out? No. Otherwise, like Rick will do ten, and then I can go do my time. You guys can still sit and bullshit if yeah, you okay. want. Okay. Was then... uh, is um is uh Rick Tempesta's working with us? I fucking love Rick. I wish he was. Maybe we'll have Rick come out while you're up here. There you go. Maybe <coughs> while I'm on stage, he can. Uh, um, he fucking out. makes me laugh so hard. What uh is what's the crowd like? Is it sold out or no? I haven't looked. I've been out Fuck. here. I'm sure it'll be close to sold out. They've been great crowds all week, man. Yeah. We People check. like you, dude. No, no. No. Like when he, a he asks, did you tell him to ask, like, who's seen you before? It's a good No, 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 but I'm glad he does that yeah, because now good. I'm like... I'm like, oh, good, because now I know how many people haven't, so I can do fucking old material and yeah. be a hack. I guess there's no equivalent to that in fighting. Like, yeah, I got it. Oh, I'm doing a bunch of old, fi old fighting tricks. Yeah, you can't phone in your. You no, can't no, unless fight you start punching. It works. Yeah. No matter how old it is. Unless you start Fuck. punching like this. Yeah. <laughs> You're talking to a Brian, talking to a mic. No, as long as it works. If it's old, it new, it doesn't matter. As long as it works, hey, I'm gonna do it over and over again until it stops working. You know? Yeah. I mean, it's the same with you guys. You guys think your material is old because you hear it every day, but we don't hear it every day. You know what I mean? So when we see it, we see it once, or maybe this is the second time. Oh, I heard him say that before. But yeah. Hey, how many people has Yotes and Clyde left kicked? Man, and the, if it works, right. I'm gonna keep doing it. Yeah. Until yeah. it doesn't work, then you gotta. Was he got 250, 300 fights? Left kick, left kick, left kick, left kick. And Fuck. people prepare for it, but it still doesn't help. Yeah, they know it's going to come. Yeah. He'll tell you it's going to come. Probably he'd say, hey, I'm about to left kick you. <laughs> <laughs> Stop it, bitch. Yeah, I wish I had one move like that in my bag. I, that's the thing that blows me away. Is, Bert, you do all this crazy shit where you, like, you know, with your TV shows and stuff. But the fact that, like, one leg kick right now from either one of you guys. I would, no, fuck no, man. Yeah, I would, yeah, yeah, yeah. Let him do it to you. No, I no let, let him do it to you. I'll, I'll literally be out of commission for a fucking month. Like, Dude, I saw that one video. Although I could take a picture of him and go into the doctor and try to get some pain pills and just say, this guy kicked me. Yeah. That's why I need <laughs> Or just show him the bruise. Who was that bruise? There's a, a, a Joe was like talking about one time about someone got a bruise on their leg and it was so fucking ridiculous yes yeah. and it was like fucking i remember googling it looking at it and being like holy shit i fought four gracies at once one time and i got fucking <laughs> by the way i got <laughs> no choked one else out could ever say i got choked out by uh one of the h's and uh <laughs> which is actually an R. yeah which is actually an r yeah yeah <laughs> did you go to sleep uh, yeah, I went to sleep, and it was one of the most terrifying fucking things in my entire life. When you get when when you know you're getting choked out, would you just let yourself get choked out, or do you tap before you choke out? Um, I, I, I know when I'm about to get tapped out, so I, I'll just right tap right. You. you know what I mean? I already really? know it's coming. Like I, I've done it enough. I know when you, the defense is done. Right? Yeah. 
Is there a I've point? Been that, is there a point though yeah. when you're getting when you're you're going to bed like you you start seeing it like your vision it's, goes away that you're just like wait this actually feels good yep. I'm just gonna go all the way in. No, it's yeah I've <laughs> seen I've seen my vision narrow a few times. I never went all the way out, but I've seen yeah. it. You know the tunnels start closing right. Yeah. And, I, my tunnel closed and I fucking woke up and there were four fucking Brazilians standing over me, going wake up Bert, wake up, wake up. <laughs> And I was fucking, and the scary part for a regular dude, like not for you guys, but for a regular dude, you know what it's like to be murdered. Because that's the, that's like being choked, like being strangled. So you know, like what, and you, I I would sleep, I would like, I was sleeping in bed that night with my wife. And I would, I would be laying there. I'd just go, <gasps> like, oh, like, oh. Shit. And yeah. my through my esophagus was sore. I was like, everything. And they I, then they gave me a knife. And they're like, try to stab one. And I was like, oh, they're going to fucking kill me. <laughs> <laughs> it's online. It's, yeah. It's one of my, it's one of my fucking opuses. Why four, though? Why not just, like, because, one Gracie yeah. seems like it'd be enough against Per Kreischer. They, were, they had uh, cow legs, and they were breaking the cow legs. They had, like, like cow legs and they were just like snap we could do that to your arm and I was like motherfucker oh <laughs> they were throwing me like crazy and I got fucking done and that was a very cathartic that and I was a professional football player for a day and those concussions and like oh, it's very cathartic by the end of the day you're like you feel very peaceful you're like I could fucking sleep for days or I don't need a beer to go to bed I don't need a Xanax I don't need anything I'm fucking done like it's time to go to bed and I, I remember getting in a bathtub both times just being like your body's sore. You have scrapes and cuts that you didn't even know where they were. You're yeah. like, why is the back of my thigh hurt? These and guys think you're a pussy right now. But, yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. <laughs> I've done a lot of fucking <laughs> stupid whining. shit. Like, welcome to my life. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I, 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 let me tell you something. I couldn't have fought them off. If they decided they wanted to fuck me in the ass, I was getting fucked. <laughs> if they at one point were like, hey, would you like to fuck him in the ass? I'd be like, all right, looks like yeah, I'm getting I mean, fucked in the ass. Thanks for asking. I guys, guess, let me know. undo my gi first. <laughs> My throat hurts. My butthole hurt. I had no integrity in my butthole. <laughs> what, and so what was the, the whole point of that show was just to, just to hurt Bert. Beat the shit out just, of you? It was hurt Bert. That was it. See, well, that Tripoli did one of those shows also. He did. Well, Tripoli loved it. Yeah. Like, Tripoli went. I, I remember, like, his was, like, right after mine. And he was, like, full force, like, fucking let's get shot by tennis balls. And, and I was, <laughs> when they did it to me, I was like, I don't think I want to do this. And they're like, that's why. My, mine was a little... Uh, I wouldn't say funnier, but it was different. Had different energy because I never wanted to do this shit. Right. So I ended up doing it against my will, and then, but that and that was the funny part. But how'd you end up with four Gracies? Uh, I mean, why not? Uh, just, why not just one? It was one of the little ones. I have no know. clue. The, the girl the one, didn't have a choice. Right? He, he looked particularly yeah, just had Kyra. Right? Yeah. Is it? It was all of Horian's family. So and Horian, and Horian's the dude that started UFC, right? Yeah, or like yeah. came up with the idea. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and so and so I upset him at the very beginning because I said we were talking about the UFC and he's like, no holds barred, you could do it. I'm doing a horrible accent of a Gracie right now. No holds barred, you could do whatever you want. You know, you could fight, you could pinch, you could bite. And I said, if I was a fighter, I'd put my fingers in their buttholes. And he <laughs> does not say a thing. He goes, swallows, and he goes, okay, let's go train. And I was like, oh, I just fucked up. <laughs> well, I mean, what you did, you really showed a lot of respect for his sport by yeah. saying, I tried the finger in the butthole move. That's exactly. I tried, I got him, I got him really far to sell a That's move. It's a move, it's called checking the oil. Is yeah. it really yeah, checking yeah. the oil? Are you starting the show? Yeah. You just did? How much time has he got? Uh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you, why don't we, how much, how long is this? Why don't we, we can pick up after the show if we want to keep going. That's up to you guys. Or, uh, yeah. Yeah, so we could up we with can tickets. Or what? Yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you're good. yeah of yeah. course we got you. Let's do this. Let's just put a pin in this. Yeah. Let's go do a comedy show. We'll go focus, and then if we still have it in us, we can keep going at the end of the night, or we'll just go out drinking. I like it. Okay. Uh, uh, hey guys, should we do some plugs, Matt Brown? Oh yeah, yeah, Matt. What do you, you got? When's uh, you want anything do to plug? Plugs. Do you have like what are you on Twitter? Oh uh, yeah, I'm on Twitter. At I am the immortal. Facebook, Facebook fan page. Um, shit. What else? Um, I should probably thank all my sponsors, Riot Cage Fighter, go. Core Synergy, <laughs> Score.com, Muscle Farm, uh, At Large Nutrition, West Side Barbell. Um, check out me and my boy Tony's uh, uh, clothing line, Swell and Knuckles Clothing, SwellandKnuckles.com. Oh, is that the, sh- um, the show right there? Yeah, that's it right there. Check Fucking out, awesome. Check out uh, Think Twice. Hyena oh, Muay Thai. I cannot wear that sweatshirt because I throw up <laughs> Think Twice and I'm already getting knocked out. <laughs> yeah, so check out uh, Hyena Muay Thai and check out... Pretty soon it's going to be my uh, fitness equipment line coming out called Ice or Mortal Kombat Equipment. Um, probably got more shit than I'm well, forgetting. Well, you got the big but, fight coming uh, up. Yeah, the Carlos big fight, Conner, uh, December 14th yeah. in Sacramento. That'll be on Fox TV. Are you sponsored by Muscle Farm? 
Yeah. Uh, ZMA Muscle Farm shits the bomb. Yeah. What up? Uh, how you got so big? Uh, that's how I do it. That's how you got so big. <laughs> if if we could magically put your your soul into Brian's body, how long would it take you to get him into your shape? Uh, I don't know what kind of shape he's in right I'm now. in a very, very horrible shape. <laughs> <laughs> it's more and like a It depends on what you consider in shape, too, right? That would be cool if you could do that. <laughs> that was a great question. I wish we had that on mic. <laughs> Hopefully we were quiet enough. Uh, Brian, what do you have to plug? Uh, when's this come out? Uh, I'm posting it uh, probably okay. tomorrow. I'll probably post it tomorrow. All right. Uh, uh, Halloween night, I'm going to be at the, the comedy club in San Diego, American Comedy Company. But all the tour dates are at DeathSquad.tv. I also have a T-shirt, ShopSquad.tv. Uh, new T-shirt, new Death Squad shirt. It's fucking yes. awesome. Thanks. I love it. Um, Mike? Um, uh, at Mike Merrifield on Twitter, and uh, <laughs> this is embarrassing, but currently I'm Merrifield the Entertainer on Facebook. I did it as a oh. joke, and uh, or you're black. Well, no, that's kind of why I did it. But I did Cedric the a, Entertainer. It was a joke. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I just did it as a joke, and now people. Why didn't you like just call it. yourself Mike Mike? Well, maybe I'll, maybe I'll change it. So anyway, and then uh, my email address was Maryfield2000 at Yahoo. Remember we put that out there. Earlier. No one email him. And I, I, I hope I get at least like 200. Uh, I don't have anything to plug. I have a date in December. I have a date in September. No, wait. Hang on. I'm going to San Diego with thing. me. No, I, I'm doing trip flip. I'm shooting trip flip for the next, uh, the next fucking 13 weeks. Jeez. So I had to cancel a lot of dates. I apologize, everybody. But um, I will be in October. I am in D.C. Uh, D.C. in October. That's my only date. And then I think I got some dates later. Um, I want to thank, thank Mike for running the show because this is a, one of the better podcasts I've ever done. Oh, really? Great job, cool. man. Thanks, Thank man. you very much. That was a lot of fun. I'm glad I had all the shit and we could do this. And God damn, Matt, thanks for stopping down. Red yeah, Band, Matt, total, thank you. No I appreciate it, man. Thanks, Thank man. you very much. My pleasure. And Red Band, it's been great partying with you this weekend. Yes. And your lovely chick, who I've, I, I got to be honest with you, is so out of your fucking league, you better get her pregnant. That's my friend <laughs> from high school. Oh, that's right, from high school. <laughs> Except she's still in it. <laughs> <laughs> Which awesome. does not make you a bad person, by the way. That's great. Awesome. Well, let's go do a comedy show. All right. All right. Sure. I love you. I love all you guys. Hey, yeah. This episode was brought to you by The Machine.